Got another exam question walkthrough for the NMR topic. So this is number 27 in the playlist. If you want to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. So the question suitable for all of the major exam boards, and I really hope you like the video. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Um, but as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So before I go into answering the question, obviously I know you can't see that, um, but I just wanted to have the full question on the screen just to make the point that to score full marks, you have to consider every aspect of the information. So we've got percentage composition by mass, we've got the mass spectrum, and we've got the proton NMR spectrum. So we've got to use all three of those bits of information to inform our answer. So starting with the percentage composition by mass, obviously what we're going to do is work out the empirical formula from that information. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we divide the percentage by the relative atomic masses. That gives us the moles, and then we divide all by the smallest, and that gets us our simplest whole number ratio. So the empirical formula, I'm just going to put EF for the time, is C2H4O. And then what we need to do now is work out the MR of that. So we've got two carbons, 24, plus another four for those hydrogens, 28, plus 16. So that's got an MR of 44. So we're now going to jump to the mass spectrum and we're looking at the peak that's furthest to the right, the one with the highest M over Z value. It's this peak here. Remember that's called the molecular ion peak and that tells us the MR of this molecule which is 88. So all we need to do now is turn this empirical formula into the molecular formula, because remember the MR of that was 44. We've just established the MR of the molecule is 88. So obviously that's half of that. So the molecular formula must be double the ratio. So it's C4H8O2. Now I am going to come back to the mass spectrum because it's always a good idea to try and identify at least one of the fragment peaks. I'll probably go for that tall one there, but obviously we can't do that until we've got the structure, which we're gonna get from the proton NMR. Okay, so there's the proton NMR, and I'm gonna do it the same way I do all of these. I'm gonna take a signal at a time, and I'm going to kind of say the same three or four things about each um, of the signals, and that'll help us build up a picture of the molecule. Okay, so starting with this signal here, it's a quartet and it's at 4 ppm. So what does a quartet mean? It means there's an adjacent CH3 group to the protons that have caused the signal. And because it's got an area of two, that means there are two protons in this environment. So therefore, it's a CH2 that's caused the signal, but it's adjacent to the CH3 group. And then all we need to do is go to the data book and see what a, a shift of 4 ppm actually corresponds to. So there's the relevant section of the data sheet and you can see obviously we can't, it can't be an H to C to BR because we've got no bromine in the molecule, likewise we've got no chlorine in the molecule. Uh, H to C to single bond O is likely, um, it can't be obviously an NH because we don't have any nitrogen and it won't be an OH because it's not a singlet. OHs are always singlet and also it's got an area of two. There's too many protons in that environment. So we're saying that this shift is indicative of H to C to single bond O. So what we can do now is draw that little part of the molecule up. So we've got two hydrogens bonded to this carbon that's got a single bonded oxygen. And adjacent to them, we've got a methane group. So the molecule has this feature in it. Okay, so moving on to this signal here at delta 2, it's a single line, so we call it a singlet. What does that mean? It means there are no adjacent um, protons that can cause splitting, and it's got an area of 3, so a CH3 group has caused that signal. So if we jump over to the data sheet, we'll be able to see what kind of environment we're dealing with. So there's 2, it's kind of just skimming this one here, obviously it's not HCN, we haven't got enough carbons for it to be uh, for there to be a benzene ring, 
Um, it can't be these because we've got three protons in the environment, so it's going to have to be this environment here, H to C to C double bond O. What will that little part of the molecule look like? Well, we've got a CH3 group and bonded to that is a C double bond O. Now you can probably see what the molecule is now, but we can't not talk about this signal here. So we'll just do the same stuff and tie it in with what we've already got. Okay, so I'll just quickly talk through this. Sorry the board's looking very cluttered now, but hopefully it's making sense. So this signal here is a triplet. What does that mean? It means it's an adjacent CH2 group. Area three means that um, a CH3 has caused the signal. And in terms of shift, you can see I've already written up H to C to R. So I just got the data sheet. You can see I've already highlighted 1.2 H to C to R. So there's no need to draw that part of the structure because we've already got it here. We're talking about these protons here now. So area three, CH3 group, adjacent to a CH2 group. That's why we've got the triplet and it's classed as an H to C to R environment. So there's the structure of X. I did say at the start that I would go back to the mass spectrum to identify this tall fragment peak here. So basically we look at the original molecule and ask ourselves what could break off that's got a mass of, in this case, 43. And the answer is this bit here. So all you need to do is say that this fragment peak at the M over Z 43 is due to CH3, CO, but don't forget your plus charge. All of the particles detected by a mass spectrometer have a positive charge.